I was visiting the Adobe Captivate users group over on Facebook and I saw a message from Chanel who was asking about a project that she's working on right now that requires the student to choose two out of four options. Once the two options are selected and the other two options are hidden, uh, and then a continue button is supposed to appear. She's having a little trouble getting the advanced action to work. What is she doing wrong, of course? And uh, I'm going to do my best to help out here. Uh, while I was reading this, I was also on uh, Netflix watching a documentary about uh, pizza and all kinds of wonderful stuff. So it inspired me to create a select any three additional toppings for your pizza interaction. So it should be very similar to what Chanel is looking for and uh, we'll take you through the process. So the first thing I should point out, uh, like any good interaction uh, that uses advanced actions, you're going to want to make sure all the objects that are related to this advanced action are properly labeled. So you'll take a look here. You can see I have a button for sausage, basil, it's labeled accordingly, pepperoni, bacon, as opposed to smart shape 241, uh, etc. So I also have a continue button, uh, or in this case, a next button that is currently set to be not visible in output. And that will be displayed when the user has selected the appropriate number of extra ingredients they can add to their pizza. So the first thing we need, of course, is some variables to keep track of some of these things. So let's go into our project drop down menu and select variables. You'll see the, the very first item I want to bring to your attention is I've set up a variable for item selected because we know that well, in my case here, I'm limiting the user to three toppings for their pizza. And I've also decided to create variables for all of those ingredients as well. So I've got bacon, basil, green peppers, olives, pepperoni, and sausage. And let's start off with our sausage item here. What we're going to do is we're going to execute advanced actions. So we're going to start by clicking the advanced action icon. So for this first advanced action for the sausage button, we're going to type in um, an action name. We'll call this select sausage. And this is going to require multiple decision points. So the first one will be button press. And these are the actions that will occur that are specific to pressing that button here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to assign our sausage variable with a literal value of one. So we just want to keep track in Boolean terms um, that sausage has been selected because we're going to need to know that a little bit later. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to change the state of our sausage button itself. So I've created an additional state so that its appearance changes when you click on a button. And we'll just start to type in sausage. And I've called that state selected. So we'll switch to that state and that will be now selected. The other thing we need to keep track of is the total number of items that have been selected. So we're going to need to increment and we'll choose item selected. That was one of the variables we created and we're going to increment it by a value of one. So this part of the advanced action is the part that will change from, from one button to the next. Um, and that's why I'm just calling it button press here. Now, next we need to add some additional tabs or decisions. So we'll select the first one here and I'm just going to kind of do these in order as they appear on the screen. Uh, it just so happens the first one is sausage. So we'll do the sausage conditional advanced action. It is conditional so we'll select the conditional tab and we're going to check if several conditions are true. Uh, in this case here the variable items selected, we want to see if it's equal to three, because obviously in this case, if it is equal to three, this interaction is done. And we also want to check to see if sausage, the button on screen, 
or in this case, the variable associated with that button, it has a value of zero. If it has a value of zero, we don't want to see that button. So we're going to check it first of all. If it's equal to the literal value of zero, in other words, we haven't pressed it, then what we're going to do is we're going to show the next button and we're going to hide because in this case the sausage button hasn't been pressed. And that's sort of the skeletal structure of all of these buttons here. So at this point what I can do is rather than writing all this again I can actually save time by duplicating that decision tab. So let's do that and we'll start to create a version of this for in this case basil and all we really need to do is check now the basil variable so we can just change that one part and then we can hide the basil button again we'll duplicate that and repeat the exact same process for pepperoni and all the remaining items so now we can save this as an action click OK and click close. So we can see that the sausage button has select sausage selected and now we can start building the advanced action for the other five buttons here. Now don't worry I'll fast forward through this part but first I'm going to show you a couple of shortcuts here. First of all I'm going to select the five remaining buttons and then we're going to execute advanced actions on all of them. You can change the on success action for a bunch of interactive items at, at once. And now we're going to go into our select sausage advanced action and we'll make some very small changes to this multiple tab advanced action to make it work for the other buttons one by one. So in this case here, like the ability to duplicate our decision tabs, we can duplicate the entire advanced action as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this decision here and we'll just change the action name in keeping with our first advanced action. And in this case here, we will write the select basil advanced action. And all of these tabs remain the same. We just need to make some small changes to the first one. So in this case here, we're just going to assign a value of 1 to our basal variable. And we're going to change the basal button to selected. That's it. So now we can update that action click OK, click Close, and of course we can make sure that this is now pointing to the basal advanced action. We're going to repeat that a bunch of times and finish out the remaining four advanced actions, and I'll join you again and show you the last little bit. Okay, so I finished writing the advanced actions, and you can see here they're all listed in the list of advanced action scripts available here. And uh, just want to double check that you've made sure to assign the appropriate advanced action script to the right buttons here. So sausage, sausage, uh, basil, yeah, pepperoni, bacon, olives, green peppers. Looks like we're good to go here. So let's just do a preview in HTML5 and see if this works as expected here. Okay, so we have our interaction here. Let's choose, well, let's see here. What would I like? Olives, pepperoni, and I think basil would be a nice choice. Nice, so the remaining three items disappear and my continue button uh, shows up. Always good to double check these things, make sure they're working. Let's try bacon, sausage, a meat lover's pizza, pepperoni. Perfect. So, and of course, now I can continue with the rest of my project. 
If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.